All right, one of the best ways of learning how to do Splunk is learn by example, learn by tutorials. Uh, we're gonna take my home network. That's the whole project. That's the reason I built this channel. I'm showing how to take things from my home network, things you can do out in the in your world, and how they and collect logs, manipulate them, send them back into Splunk, and ultimately turn them into data models so that you can uh, use whether I'm using a PFSense firewall, but if you're using a Palo Alto or you're using a uh, checkpoint, whatever the case may be, it really won't matter uh, because that's the point of a data model is it's agnostic to the source of where the data came from and your dashboards will still work. So I'm going to demo using PFSense. The very same principle should work with whatever firewall you're working with. You just need to know where the logs are and then the, the same stuff will work. So PFSense, I'm gonna ingest two different sources. So it'll be two different videos. First source will be my, uh, at the, here underneath my services, firewall, sorry, I have PF blocker NG and I wanna pull those logs. And if I click the logs, it says, hey, which log do you want? I want the IP block logs. That's cool, but that's not really a great way of getting into Splunk. Um, you could set up syslog to send it. I've had problems with that. It's not, it's not the greatest method. I prefer to actually put a universal forwarder on my PFSense box and have my PFSense monitor the logs and send the logs on as soon as they're created. So how do we do that? I've got a, PF, I've got a universal forwarder installed on my PFSense box and I, uh, I now know the path because this little nice little GUI here tells me that I'm going to var log PF blocker NG. Actually, a whole bunch of these logs are in the same location. So if I go like the air log, we'll see that it is also in that var log. So if I go here and I'm going to do a, a local, I'm going into my op Splunk forwarder, Etsy apps. I've got an app called TA PF Sense. I built that. Um, if somebody's interested, I can go put it up on my uh, on the Git channel or something. But honestly, it's uh, follow the videos I have on ingesting logs, and it'll do the same thing. I have a listing here. I've got an inputs.conf and a prompts. If I nano my inputs, I can see that I am monitoring my var log auth log, my var log DHCP D log, and I just added this stanza: monitor var log PF blocker ng. That should look very familiar. And I'm doing a start out log because I want all of them. And then I'm going to go grab the PFSense. I'm going to make the source type PFSense PF blocker NG. Yes, I recognize that means the error logs can have that source type. The block will have that, but that's why I'm using Cribble. Cribble is a grand tool, is an amazing tool. It'll jump in the middle. It's going to change the source types for me. And so I won't have to worry about that. I actually want this so I can see at the end of the day, which logs do I still need to parse and, and, and change because I'll be looking specifically for this source type. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the basis there. We're going to uh, index equals PF sense. I'm going to exit. I restart Splunk. And if I do that, I can come into Splunk. I can run this query index equals PF sense, source type equals PF sense, PF blocker NG. And I'm going to put the source in because I want the IP block dot logs. And I want, I'm going to table out just the raw and I want the top 10 logs. Reason being is I could use uh, Cribble to try to uh, monitor the data coming across the stream. But if this doesn't fire off all the time, and actually they don't, they're not that, they're not that consistent, um, then I, I won't be able to see the logs. And so I need to be able to have a way of providing the logs for Cribble because I don't want to just try to operate on these blindly. And that's the big reason I don't like playing with props and comp. The props configs, you just really don't see what you're doing and you have to restart Splunk and you hope that it will work. Uh, Cribble, if I can give it some sample data, I can actually make changes and see what it's going to do with that data. So I table raw, grab head 10, and then I'm just going to export these. And I'm going to call it, I'm going to grab that file. I've already done it. And I have this PF block, PF sense block CSV. If I open that PF sense block CSV, there, I missed this under, it's got a header for raw. I'd already erased it, sorry. I'm gonna re remove that header, and then I'm gonna just come down and remove every quote. Go to the end. Don't put the space there. And if I save this, and I'm gonna save it as pfsetsblock.sample, I just like the .sample because it makes me know it's a sample file. It doesn't have to be that. I now have a log file. I hit save, and then I can come into 
the pipeline here, and I'm going to grab a sample data. And so I'm going to import data, and all I need to do is drag over the sample, drag it right on, and Splunk will read that. It already says, oh, look, there's date and time. Yeah, I can parse that out for you. Oh, I see your end of line. So it's already doing the event breaker, those things that um, you have to usually do in props. It's going to do it for me. I'm not going to save this because I already have one as PFSense block sample, but otherwise you'd save it as a sample file, give it a name, and you're good to go. Nope, I don't want to save. Am I sure I want to leave? Yes, I am. All right, so if I grab this uh, filter, like, oops. If I grab the PFSense block sample data, I can see what it looks like. That's what it's going to be sent up to Cribble. Now, there are some fields that are missing. When Splunk sends the stuff up, it's going to have, from that inputs, a index and a source type. Because I just grabbed the raw log file, it doesn't have that. So we'll make some modifications here with some of the things we're uh, playing with just to uh, um, put those fields in there and make sure they work. So if I hit save, I turned off all the features I've already built. This is a working model. Make sure it, I didn't run into any uh, gotchas while I was playing with this. We can see in says what it looks like when the data comes in. Out is what it looks like when it goes out. The only thing it's added is it's gone down the Cribble pipe, processing pipelines. It's gone down the PFSense block pipeline. So the very first thing I added, now notice this is grayed out, which means it's not active. I added a eval field. So it went function eval, and I came down to these evaluate fields, and I just added a new field in, and I said index equals pfsense, source type equals pfsense block, source equals, and I put the source in there. When I run this, now these logs look just like what Splunk is sending over. The only thing is, I didn't bother to turn it on. So when I hit save now with it activated, we'll see that it's going to add three new fields. Yep, so now we have an index, a source, and a source type. Now these logs reflect exactly what would be coming in when Splunk sends it from a universal forwarder. Next thing we want to do is we want to parse these logs. And I'm just going to hit parser. It's pretty easy. And then I'll erase it because I'm not going to, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here. I've already done it. Parser, um, it's going to say, hey, uh, what kind of parser do you want to do? I'm going to say extract, CSV, keep it just the same. Yep, it's pretty much a CSV file. And what fills do I want to keep? Real simple thing, I can do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That's a really horrible naming, but if I hit that, what it's going to do is it's going to go to each thing before a comma. A is going to get assigned stuff before the comma. The B is going to get that, C, D, E, F, and so on. Hopefully, you give your stuff a lot better names. I have gone to the documentation, and here someone has written it out. It's date, timestamp, tracker ID, interface, interface name, action, etc. So I actually went and I put those names in here. I chose time, and then I just wrote them in, and I can copy them if I want. Sure, and I'll paste them right into our list of fields. Or I could have just activated the other one. Anyway, either way I go. And now I hit save. And all of those fields are now parsed. They all match up, validate that I'm happy with what they are. I am. All right. The only thing I now need to do is this whole point is I've, I've pulled them out, but do they match the data model name? Um, so I can go look at my data model. If I log in, it's going to be network traffic. That's where I'm going to put it. And I can see that I have an app. Oh, I don't have an app. Channel, yeah, it doesn't matter. Channel's not related. Desk business unit, desk category, desk interface. Um, none of those are really applicable. Desk IP, yep, we have a desk IP, and we called it desk IP. We're good there. No Mac, no priority, no translated, no desk zone. Direction, is there a direction field? And if we look, yes, there is, and we called it direction. All right, we're good there. We come on down, duration, there's no duration, nothing about device, no priority, no flow ID, no process. There is a protocol and a protocol version. I know that we have a protocol and we have a pro uh, IP version. So if we look at those, IP version is four and protocol is UDP. So maybe we want to change protocol version to 
Do we want to make it IP version or protocol ID? Which one is it? We'll have to come back and fix that. So how do we fix it? We're going to come in here. We're going to do an eval. Uh, and I'm going to say that evaluate the field. We need a protocol version. I believe they're referring to the IP protocol, internet protocol, so I'm going to call it IP version. If I hit this, I'll now have a protocol version. And there it is. And now I match up with this data model. Response time source, source IP, we're good there. Nothing really important, nothing. Then we come down here to action. We have an action. Do we have an action here? Yes, we do. All right, we're good. What about, oh, we've got dest and source. Those are not existent. We have a source IP and a dest IP. They use all of them, so let's go add ours in there. Source IP. Uh, sorry, I did that reversed. I want, I want a new field called source, and it's going to come from source IP. I'm going to do a new field called dest. And I'm going to call it dest IP. And if I do that, and I hit save, we're good. To, we should have it. Source dest IP dest. Good. All right. Vendor product and application. Those are two app things that we don't have. So we're just going to put them in there. So I'm going to go app, and I'm going to call this. PF sense, PF blocker. That's the, and put it in between single quotes and vendor product. I'm going to call this PF sense because that's where it comes from. Now I have got my stuff basically SIM compliant. All the fields that I truly need out of here, we got source port, desk port, direction. Um, they're all good. So let's just save that. The last thing we'll notice is, notice these raw, that's still crappy. I don't like that, I don't like that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna serialize. Serialize says, let's combine all that stuff back. And so if I hit serialize, I can, do I want a CSV, a, a key value, JSON? I like key value. So I'm gonna do key value and it's gonna say, hey, what fields do you wanna keep? What fields do you wanna get rid of? I wanna get rid of everything with an underscore. Yeah, that makes sense. That's just by default. I want to get rid of Cribble Breaker. I don't want to put that in my raw log. And then the star says put everything else there. Well, we've got an index. I don't want index in there. So I'm going to go not index, not source, not source type. Okay. And then we're just going to drag. If I hit this, let's see what happens. It's going to rewrite the raw log into key values. Makes it a whole lot easier to read. It's no longer CSV. Now, I, what I've done, I've actually made these logs larger. I'm sending these raws in, and I'm sending in all of these. But this is what data acceleration is. When you accelerate data, you're going to be pulling these fields aside and setting them there. There might be some fields, though, that we sit here and we go, you know what? I actually don't need those. And so we could come down here and we can go remove fields and we could say, you know what? Who cares about IP evaluated? I don't want to hold on to that. IP evaluated. I don't like uh, GOIP. It's not that I think GOIP is bad. I just don't see any reason to accelerate that. It's still going to be in my raw logs. Oops. Um, no, it won't. Not if I put it there. So we're going to do another eval statement. It's important. This is a good example. Remove fields. I take IP evaluated out, GOIP. It's going to follow this path. They disappeared from here. And then when it serializes, it's grabbing all these fields. So I'm actually going to lose it. So it would be better to do an eval down below. And I'm going to grab these fields here, copy them, and remove. And then I can go take these out. I can say feed name isn't important. No reason to accelerate that. And 
and feed name will disappear off this list. So I can slowly reduce down how much stuff I'm sending to Splunk. Um, and so this is, if I now go, if I hit save, um, I'm going to, I have a big pipeline for all of my PFSense. Uh, we'll fill out all of these, we go along. I have stuff for PFSense squid, my blocker, and I've already taken those three things I just wrote over here. I've put them in, I hit save. I'm now going to see these logs showing up in my Splunk instance modified with a new source type, new source index, all the fields parsed, now as key values instead of CSVs. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to do one more video on taking my firewall logs and turning them into uh, usable fields, and then we'll actually show them in Splunk using a data model. I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk ninja. Uh, if this was at all useful, give me a thumbs up. I'd love it to subscribe to the channel. Both of those are huge at getting this signal amplified to other people so that when they're searching, they my data uh, these videos pop up. If you think it was useful, please help make these videos available for others by giving a thumbs up and liking, uh, subscribing to the channel. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope you keep watching the videos in this playlist. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, put them down below in the comments below. I always take requests for things you might want me to do a video of. Anyway, hope to hear from you later. Uh, have a great day.